All right. This was a talk that I gave uh, in the last TEDx. I think it was around 2015 or so. So the life of a rejected patent. So I won't bore you much into the intricacies of how a patent works, but I will tell you as to the story of this particular patent. Normally, when a patent is created, there are three things that can happen to that patent. One, it's the core business patent. In this case, it could be part of Fuji, uh, Facebook, or, or uh, it could be part of Twitter, and it gets completely assimilated into the ecosystem of their core businesses. The second is what's called as corporate bar bartering. So in this situation, a patent is not really part of the core business, but it can actually be used for bartering with competition and create co competition type scenarios. The third is where my story starts. A patent is completely rejected and then put into a vault. And in this case, it's not part of the core business. It's not useful for bartering. It's got nothing to do with the organization that invented it. In this situation, what happens is, in most cases, these patents in bulk are, are sold to patent organizations. We call them patent trolls. These have nothing to do with, uh, with, with, uh, with the ideas. They are basically accumulating patents. And then they wait around for a startup to come up with an idea that kind of has an infringement issue with the patent that is in the vault. And then they get hit with a lawsuit. Right? And this is where ideas go to die. You know, this is basically where, what the issue is, whether it's Japan or US or India, it doesn't matter where it is. So in my case, there was a patent, such a rejected patent, which was in the vaults of Fuji Xerox. And the, my whole talk about four years ago was, why don't organizations like Fuji Xerox or big corporates in Japan, or for that matter, anywhere, let entrepreneurs like me take the patent out, raise venture capital money, and then start and form startups. So I basically, this is what I did in this case, in the patent case that I'm talking about today. This was my talk about four years ago as to what we can do as an organization uh, and what we can do as a country to actually take patents out to market and let startups try it. So now let me go past that and, and we'll talk about what really happened to this patent after the, you know, I licensed it four years ago, five years ago. So there's a great myth that says, you know, if you're, if you actually, if founding a startup is like jumping off a cliff and then building wings along the way. It's such a pompous and grandiose, you know, message. It never happens that way. It's usually the way that it actually, things happen in a startup is, I call it two Ps, persistence and pivoting, right? <laughs> Those are the two things that actually makes a startup a reality. So let me use a song to basically highlight what this persistence and uh, pivots are. So I'm going to stop that. I'm not trying to glorify alcohol, but that's kind of the message that I want to get across, that persistence is about not giving up, and that's basically what makes a startup successful. And it's not just about persistence, it's also about pivots. So in this case, our uh, gentleman here in the song is pivoting from a whiskey drink to a vodka drink and hoping that he won't actually uh, <laughs> fall, up, fall down drunk. Um, so startups is basically what it is. It's about persistence and pivots. Uh, and this has been our case in the case of the patent that uh, we got out of Fuji Xerox. And it's always been as about persistence and pivots. So as we move into the next step, let me just call what a pivot is. A pivot is basically an idea that has completely colossally failed. Right? And that's when you basically go in and say, I want to pivot this company. Um, and in this case, most companies have like six or seven pivots before they find a, uh, a, a product market fit. And, and so was it in our case as well, in the case of our patent. Uh, so in a way, the startup anthem for us was basically this. Right? And if you want to change up the lyrics to the song that you just heard, it is about pivoting to video, to AI, to blockchain, to a platform. And then the most important one is the last line, you know, you, I'm never going to give up pivoting till I find a product market fit. And that basically was the case uh, in, in the case of the story of our patent as well. So finally, after many pivots, we found a product market fit that was a platform. And that's basically how the company started to move forward with that particular pattern. But let's kind of look forward into the, what has happened since that point of time. When we actually started this patent and starting, uh, started to get this patent into a product, 
At that point of time, there were not many platforms. There were few, but not really a lot. But since that point of time, it has completely saturated the market. Like, let's look at your own mobile devices right now. You probably have 10 platforms in there, right? And you probably have seven, seven messaging platforms on that. And it's completely fragmented in, in, uh, in, in the way that you know, uh, it's getting used today. So let me use the analogy of the California gold rush to kind of encapsulate and kind of figure, you know, give you an idea as to what has really happened into the, uh, into the platforms. So the story of the California gold rush starts when gold was discovered in California. People from all around the globe started to move in to California to dig for gold. But a select few decided that their gold is not about digging the dirt, but they decided their gold was selling the tools, right? And we call this the platform. And they got a lot more richer selling the platform than the content, which was the gold. And this is basically what we have seen in the last five or six years, and we continue to see with our apps today. Everybody's building a platform. And over a period of time, a similar thing happened to this. People decided that instead of digging for gold, they could get rich faster by building a platform, and we reached a saturation point. And that's what we are today in terms of our, where we are today in terms of platforms. Quality products were actually sidelined for subpar you know, items. So when you have like too many platforms, what do you do? You fill it with all kinds of subpar content. You're not, you don't have quality content in there because quality content comes at a premium. And today, that is the state of our media industry. Right? If you look at any kind of platforms out there that, that distributes media, it's probably 1% uh, quality, and then 99% is basically subpar content. Right? So evolution of storytelling. So let's come to uh, you know, how, how things have evolved in terms of storytelling and that, that content that is filling the platform today. Back in, you know, in, the, in Genesis, you know, in the dawn of time, humans have actually expressed themselves uh, you know, in different ways. One of the ways they expressed themselves was through cave paintings. They actually were telling stories uh, using these paintings. And when things started to get into language, when they uh, evolved into language, then we had stories that we could share through generations of storytelling um, and, and, and expressing culture, tradition, and so forth. Fast forward, we had great storytellers in the Middle Ages to the 19th century, you know, Shakespeare, Jonathan Swift, Mark Twain, Hemingway, fantastic storytellers, right? And these guys would take us to faraway places just by reading. Uh, Jonathan Swift with Gulliver, Gulliver Travels, for example. You know, it was, they, he could, they could actually give us imagery just by words. And then we move into the 19th century uh, uh, with the invent, invention of the camera and the films, and you have like Kurosawa, Sachidit Ray, Stanley Kubrick, you know, Cecile de, de Mille. They created great stories, and they created stories that we would actually sit and think and make us actually wonder. Then platforms was invented, and this is where we are today. Right, so we are in this, in in this, uh, in, in this you know, plethora of content with nothing interesting to see, and stories that has no sense at all. Why would I be interested in watching somebody drink a big, huge cup of tea? Right, and that's where we are today. So, how did we get here? Right, what what actually made the evolution of storytelling, which started with such beautiful narratives? to come up to this situation. Two reasons. One, it's the dominance of social media, right? It's, it's basically, we as consumers are completely addicted to the like and the follow count. We will post anything to get likes and follows. That is basically where our storytelling is today. It has no context, it has no narrative, but it's just about the 15 seconds of fame that I want to get out of this. So I'm going to post anything, any kind of story that gets me the 15 seconds of fame. The second, television companies following this trend, right? So basically, television companies, if you look at, if you look at any kind of, open up any kind of channels on Japanese TV today, it's always about some gainogen, some celebrity, you know, people walking around, opening her cupboard, opening her kitchen. Why is that important to us? How is that storytelling, right? And so basically, it's a race to the bottom in terms of quality of content, and also in terms of production values. Right? So this is basically where we are today. And how can we reform that? And this is basically where our patent goes into the next level of abstraction, the next story. So the way that we can actually do this is looking at regional stories, looking at folklores, novels, uh, comics, 
looking at comment that content that actually can you know bring out emotions deep thinking deep narratives and we we should write characters that actually goes across borders and we can also highlight our commonalities instead of the similarities you know as as any culture um, or being in asia for that matter we have many commonalities within, within us either through uh, migration or through philosophies you know if you look at buddhism for example it took uh, birth in india traveled into china into korea and then into japan there are a lot of cultural com- commonalities with that and why don't we exploit that why don't we look at that and basically look, look at narratives that actually bring fantastic stories to life so we all we may all speak different languages and we may all look different but our culture and tradition and and you know we can relate to that and and so basically what we are going at the next evolution of this patent is to basically bring stories via the medium of entertainment into the market so my last and parting uh messages you now let's enrich our lives by bringing compelling stories to the platform um if i had all i have to leave you with anything don't go today and like a comment or 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 a share a story that has no makes no sense share something that actually enriches your lives and enriches somebody else's life and if you're a storyteller please work on stories that actually makes people think and makes people have emotion and 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 draws differences and makes makes it into a much more cohesive message to keep us all together thank you that's it.